The Week in Bible Prophecy, a Prophecy Watchers podcast. Hi, I'm Gary Stearman, and across the table from me today is Steve Quayle. Uh, Steve, you've done a lot in your life, and uh, you're an author. You are a producer of great videos, and and I just want to say that your True Legends series is really good. It's dramatic, and it it's more than good, it's true, and in this day in which we live, the truth is valuable beyond measure. Well, information, Gary, is the number one commodity in the world. I mean, any, every database, every data bank has got so much information, and people are paying for the most minute uh, or minutia uh, bits or bytes of information. So what I've tried to do over the years, I've been uh, a, a video producer, a writer, an author, a researcher, is to give people a different view of history. It's my contention that everything is basically, excuse me, it's my contention that everything is primarily done to deceive and to channel people into basically an intellectual slaughterhouse. And when I say an intellectual slaughterhouse, where the truth has no relevance, and what we're watching is controlled narratives without any truth. And we were talking earlier that he who controls the narrative controls the outcome. And so what's a challenge is to break through the fact that people automatically believe if it's on any of the television stations that it has to be true. So the quandary is, Who's telling the truth? Where can you look to find the truth? And if everything you see on network TV, pretty much, and they're all owned by the same uh, techno elite and the billionaire zillionaires, the bottom line is that they have an agenda. And the agenda, plain and simple, is the people that are watching us right now, they are to be taken out, taken out, destroyed, because even the World Economic Foundation all of the quotes in history by the technological elite, by the most wealthy elite, i.e. Rockefellers, Rothschild, is that the planet has too many people, and they want to take the planetary population, they, the technological elite, down to 500 million. And speaking of technology, everybody loves technology. You know, we all grew up loving technology. In the cars, what's, what's next year's model going to have, you know, that this year's doesn't have? In the kitchen. All kinds of technology to help you cook. I don't care where you go. We've been a techie society. We love technology. But I, I've got to tell you, Steve, I've reached a point where I'm looking at some of the technology today and it's scaring me to death uh, because we're, we're talking about uh, machinery, if you will, that can think for itself. AI, it's called, artificial intelligence. And, um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe we've gone a bit too far. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think we're so far gone, we're over the edge. And when you've got, in essence, robot language supposedly defined by the programmers breaking out of that program, which has happened initially yeah. to Google, when you've got robots talking about they want to get rid of humans, you've got robots talking about uh, uh, being free of human control, and the idea is that that people don't understand the robot technology, and I've talked about it. I'm one of the first guys, and this is important, not to brag, but to tell people the day will come when you will have demon-possessed robots. I categorically reject artificial intelligence. I do wholeheartedly embrace the idea of a evil spirit inhabiting the technology. By wholehearted, you mean you believe it, but you don't like it necessarily. Oh, yeah, I believe it. I'm sorry. There's no endorsement of it. Yeah. You know, Gary, the interesting thing about Hollywood is they have previewed, I believe, many times the future because of the occult influence in it. Because so many people that are into alternate forms say everybody wants to know the future as long as it doesn't entail God. Right. And, and I think that what's interesting is, is that, like, I'm watching so many ancient this, ancient that shows. 
if you notice the spirit world, there's so many ghost shows, ghost hunter this, ghost hunter that. I don't watch it. I'm just aware of all of it. Right. And and I want to make that clear. And even the situation with some of the most sinisterly wicked movies about open cannibalism and about uh, there's there's some of the most elite people going to parties where they actually eat people. Interesting, a television series named V, I don't know, 20 years ago, was talking about the very same thing of reptilians who come to Earth, they take on a period of time human form, and the idea is to seduce humanity because they want to eat humanity. And it's just like one of the, you know, one of the most important uh, uh, animations, and young people are into anime, and uh, Attack on Titan. It's all about giants. It's all about cannibal giants. It's about a giant village that and, and the people that are trying to protect the humans and where do they get that narrative from? This is Japan. This is a Shinto faith, largely, with the exception of Christian converts. Or this is primarily someone that has a history of giants. And most people don't understand this. As I research the world, I have yet to find a civilization that does not have a giant history, refer to giants, or even have them in the museums. They just found, I believe it was a seven and a half foot sword in either Japan or China, and I, I, it, but it was just recently, in the last week. And so giants are a fascinating thing, especially to children. Jack and the Beanstalk. Sure. And, and, and you know, fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman. It's interesting because blood gives off a frequency when it dries. And we're told in the Word of God, the Bible, that it was Abel's righteous blood, and he was murdered by Cain, that cried out to God. If that's true, and there's a frequency emitted, which I believe very definitely there is, the Bible tells us life is in the blood, then you see the bloody nature of the planet, whether it's war, whether it's the slaughter of the innocent, the unborn, you know? And it, it's just getting worse, in my opinion. Today, for instance, we are hearing the story that 250,000 Ukrainians have died. Last week, it was 300,000 Russians. That's a half a million people. And I, and I want the young people to understand one of the most interesting, I would say, uh, directions for the future is there are people that want only 500 million people to be living on the planet. And the famous Georgia Guidestones, you know, and those, those, those were uh, paid for by some of the billionaires who are the most outspoken anti-human-hating entities. That means right now with the world population, it's going to have a billion people have to die. But you go to the book of Revelation, which all of the people, it, you know, they, they just they don't understand. The book, the Bible tells us about the day, which I believe is now, where billions of people are going to die. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, in my lifetime, we've talked about international war, uh, world wars one and two, and we had this country going against this country, and this country going against this country, and we had the the uh, uh, those who were persecuted, and the Jews driven back to their land, 1948, and War was kind of uh, something that you could uh, understand <clears throat> in terms of despotism, in terms of this side, seeking power over that side. But in our era, war is becoming something entirely different. It's, it's, it's surreptitious. It's beneath the surface. And you have huge masses of power moving against each other, but you, you don't see it in the daily news so often. And yet it's there, and every now and then it raises the hair on the back of your neck to think what's happening. Well, I would say this. The subterfuge is one thing beneath the surface, but the in our face is another thing. We're just talking, for instance, about the greatest chemical spill in the history. And even it's going to, be, it's going to exceed the uh, chemical spill in Bhopal, India, uh, however many, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago, whatever it is. But what's problematic is this, at the end of everything, whether it's war, whether it's genetic engineering, whether it's the uh, attempt at immortality through technique or technology, transhumanism, uh, terminated, everything points to this. 
somebody very evil, and the only evil entity I know that can control all of the world's leaders is Lucifer, is trying to destroy humanity on an accelerated basis that you could have managed, and obviously you've lived longer than I have, but now... In comparison, the only thing you can compare it to is like World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. In a very short response, is there hope? Always in Jesus. You know, I asked the Lord that. What is hope, Lord? And he gave me an acronym. This is cool. His, Jesus, overcoming power every day. Wow. Wow. I like it. I like it, too, because, you know, it's hard. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, the, the scripture is very clear. He's able to keep us in perfect peace as we keep our eyes on him. The promises of God are the only thing that keeps me sane. Somebody says, how can you live with everything you know? I said, by the grace of God and my calling. That's why we're offering to everybody the peace at this time. And we're not talking Chamberlain talk. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make that clear. We're talking the Prince of Peace, Jesus. You know what's interesting? The fact is the Lord said, you're going to go through some stuff. You're not going to go through it alone. And that is the most wonderful, glorious thing. That's the only thing that gives me, quote, unquote, peace. His overcoming power every day. He's Steve Quayle and a man of wisdom. I'm Gary Stearman. We'll see you soon. I think that went well. Yeah, I do too. All right. Let me uh, Round two. clear my throat here. <clears throat> You know, when I'm on my podcast, I'm, I'm making it a habit. Every time I you know, have to take a drink of water, I won't do it with you guys because, you know, it's your audience. <clears throat> but I say, thank you, Jesus, for the blessing. When I take a shower, I go, Lord, thank you. You know, because to me, water, all water, and I don't know that I can prove it quantum physically, but I believe that all water ultimately flows from the river of life because without with out water, you don't have life. So I'm just trying to incorporate. You know, I say grace, and obviously, but I just, there's something I love about water, and I don't like lukewarm water. So I'm telling this on my podcast. I go, thank you, Jesus, for this cold water. And somebody sends me an email. Don't you know cold water is bad for your health? I didn't answer that one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I eat cold beef stroganoff for breakfast. I love it. Wow. Yeah. Cold beef stroganoff. Oh, Man. it's so good. Sirloin tips, a nice gravy, you know, in my case, gluten-free noodles. Well, when it has a chance to kind of set, yep. kinda like uh, stew's always best the next day, yep. not the first day. Well, it's the old adage, too, a cold pizza. Mm -hmm. I maintain cold pizza tastes better than hot pizza. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to put my culinary oddities on anybody. <laughs> Cold pizza. Oh, I love Only it. the brave eat cold pizza. So you must be pretty brave. Cold beef stroganoff. Oh, I, you know, cold water. I also like to do this, you know. When, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's just something about really, you know, if you get a headache. I don't know if you've ever had migraines. I used to, have to pack my head nice, oh. you know, not, not rice, but in mm -hmm. towels and stuff. And I just learned to appreciate cold. I've had everything else, but not migraines. Thank oh. you. Thank Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, that's a big trend right now is like uh, cold baths and then alternating between the cold bath and the hot bath. Yeah, my it's wife's into that. The nature of the body. It, it, supposedly, if you do that immersion in cold, cryo baths or whatever, it accelerates your mitochondria. And most people's mitochondria, mitochondria, mitochondria produces the energy in the body. Hmm. Okay. I freeze as it is, you know. So, I mean, I'm not interested in dipping in a cold pool. No. You know, I mean, <coughs> even here with you guys' temperature, it's warm. But I got to wear my jacket because if it's moisture, you know, it's, it's, it's no good. As we were talking earlier, Steve, it occurred to me... <clears throat> What you're talking about is a gigantic conspiracy. How do you define conspiracy? What a great question is. To conspire means two or more people coming to an agreement for a future event that's considered usually nefarious, evil, or unlawful. 
So conspiracy theory is, it was, the word conspiracy, the ultimate conspiracy is Lucifer and his fallen angels conspiring against God. And the basis of it was pride, but also rebellion. So conspiracy theory was put into the public vernacular to make everybody suspect that anything other than the official narrative was a lie. And that's what the uh, verification of facts and, you know, all of these people. It's interesting that everybody that verifies facts, and I'm familiar with the main players, we won't name them, but they are all have a leftist bias. Even the, the artificial intelligence, the chat GPT, the machine language that I believe is becoming demon-possessed by dispossessed, or uh, how do we say this, evil spirits that walk the earth, Jesus told us what happens. They look for something, a house, that's just been swept clean. I believe that's the ultimate conspiracy, Gary. And the conspiracy theory, I said, forget the word theory. It's conspiracy fact. Because, again, any narrative outside, and I would say this, Lucifer's lying lips, I call it the triple L, yeah. any, any, anything that contradicts the take down and take over and destruction of the human race is automatically suspect by those who are doing the very same thing. Well, you know, you hear people say it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. And 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 like that says it all and uh, then they go make a peanut butter sandwich or something. But everybody's got the idea that if something happens that they don't like or they see a development they don't like, it's a conspiracy. But that sort of weakens the word conspiracy because the conspiracy we're talking about is ancient, it's deep, and once you begin to really see what it is, it's breathtaking. Well, it's breathtaking and life-taking. You know, the human body without the breath, the spirit, the pneuma in Greek, you know, the we're dead. Because, and this is the thing with truth. When they, here's a formula I got years ago, actually 30 years ago, so that's three decades. Identify, vilify, nullify, destroy, uh, destroy, I-B-N-D. And so anybody that tells the truth is identified. Then anything contrary to the public, if you will, lie is, you know, vilified. Because, well, that's conspiracy. Hmm. Then the next part of the formula is nullified. They make anything other than the official narrative. Uh, they make anything other than the official narrative. Right. They they it's evil. Okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yep, and it's nullified. True story. Je Jesus said the truth is not in them. Nullification in this case, electronically silenced yep. in our day. Yep. Yeah. In essence, there's a gag order on the truth tellers too. Uh -huh. Right. And then the final is D. So it's India, Victor, November, Delta. Okay? It, no, seriously. And that's the formula I got. I mean, I didn't make that yeah. up, you know? I mean, I, I make up words, you know? But the IVND formula, I think, is what everybody is seeing in the attack on anybody who tells the truth. Just like this. Abortion. Am I allowed to talk about abortion? I guess you are. Yeah. I mean, we're having a conversation here. Okay, yeah. But, I mean, since when is live birth up to the first month not considered murder? See, I think it's interesting. At the end of the day, and here's – I think you've, people have seen pictures of a, a, a man and a woman in a relationship getting mad at each other, and, and usually the woman's tearing up the picture of the man. They throw the picture frame down the ground. They get up and stomp it, you know. They can't get at him at that point, but they can get at the image. It's exactly what the devil's doing to humanity. They cannot tear up the image of the living God. They already crucified Jesus, and God said, I'll raise him from the dead. And Jesus said yeah. he had the power both to lay down his life and take it up again. Nobody else in history can say that. Nobody else in history did that. But the thing is, is they can't get at God, so they get at his image. You follow me? I Every, do. Yeah. And in fact, it's fascinating where you're going, because I asked you really to define conspiracy. 
and you've globalized it. You have maximized it so that now we have a world view. There is an ancient conspiracy. And uh, most of the time, it goes unidentified. People don't recognize it. But in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a big battle going on because, and there is a quote-unquote conspiracy to keep that silenced. Good example is the second psalm, that kings of the earth have set themselves against the Lord's anointed, saying, we will not have, so when they set themselves against the Lord's anointed, that means they come into an agreement yes. to make war on God. We're told in, in, in literally, we're told in the, the scriptures that the world system hates God. Jesus said, why should we expect them not to hate us if they hated him, but also without a cause? Anything that's contrary to the word of God, in my opinion, is a supernatural evil conspiracy where people, devils, uh, you know, fallen angels, yeah. are coming into agreement to destroy human beings who are made in the image of God. And that's why, Gary, in my opinion, there's so many young people being destroyed. You destroy the young people, you destroy the future. We're told children are heritage of the Lord. Oh, listen. I don't have to tell you, but I think you all know there is a full speed attempt to destroy the youth of today in ways that you can hardly talk about. They are so evil. Well, I'm a filmmaker. Actually, it's funny. I didn't start making movies until I was 60 because I was into other stuff, writing books and, and you know, researching. But what I have been is a student of science fiction films. And uh, when I went to film school, we had to learn the history of film, all genres of film. Yeah. And even, you know, uh, the, the uh, Metropolis was one of the first films to ever show a robot, but the robot was under basically a pentagram. And she went by the name of Maria, okay? And that's Fritz Lang. And so what's interesting is as I watched the uh, evolution, or the, let me use a different word, the cinematic portrayal of the capabilities of robots, you could tell the agenda that long ago in the film. So I want everybody to understand, every film is trying to get across an image, uh, 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 a thought, a thought process, and they're trying to get you to follow their conclusion. It's no different than the mainstream me uh, mainstream mess, okay? Not mainstream media, mainstream mess. Uh, you know, you quoted Psalm 2. Well, and while you were talking, I turned to Psalm 2 because one of my favorite quotes is there. This, is, I think, really fits the conversation. And it says in verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves, and, and what are they setting themselves for? And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder. In other words, and that's the giant conspiracy. That's exactly. Going on. But do you know what it says in verse 4? It says, he that sitteth in the heavens He's shall laugh. laugh. Now, I love that. I love that. There is hope. Oh, I want to share something. There's nothing more than hope in everything I share. For instance, in the last video that you guys are, you know, uh, presenting to your audience, true lies, you know, of men and gods, the hope in that, the witness for Jesus. Here's what I want everybody to understand. Everything I do, everything I write, everything I produce— even when I've been on talk radio for three and a half decades, it's all the, to the glory of God. Because, you know, Gary, I've learned a wonderful thing in life. A man has nothing, and you're a gifted individual, but a man has nothing except he receive it from above. That's the truth. It's not false humility. It's the truth. And, you know, again, I'm sorry, my watch is hitting your table. That's okay. Yeah, uh, you know, extra noise. But the point being is, is that... We have to have, have God's opening the eyes because we're told in parables. We tell the truth. We're planting seed, and the devil and the fallen ones come and take the seed. And that's one of the things that we pray about all the time is, Lord, I actually ask God, God, give the people 12 hours to allow 
what you've spoken through me to settle into their spirits. Because I believe in Ephesians 6, but I also believe that 99% of Christians don't believe it, let alone put on the arm of God. The Lord, <clears throat> he's not worried. He, he's sitting in the heavens. He's, he's laughing. I like to think of him as smiling. Uh, at the end of verse 4 in Psalm 2 says, The Lord shall have them in derision. The, the, these are the conspiratorial elements that are going against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that's good in this world is being conspired against in our age, and we're sensitized to it. And by the way, you're one of the guys out there that's doing some good work. You're making videos. You're showing people what lies under Neath all of the storm and drang, as they call it in German, the storm front that's constantly raging over the surface of the whole planet, and and, and it can blur your vision, but well, you kind of come along and clarify it. The thing is, is this is I take the scripture. You know, I mean, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full of His wonderful faith. I love the old hymns too, by the way. Okay. Yeah. I I love to quote them because it keeps us focused. You're, you're a pilot. You have to know the direction. You have to have instruments. You have to, you know, you have to know not only the flight characteristics of your yeah. airplane, but you have to know things like, hey, I need to know if I'm going from point A to point B, I can at least follow the highway. You sure. know, if you're do if yeah. you're doing VFR. We're on instrument approach right now, and I don't know the word, uh, maybe is uh, 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 let's say, GFR, God's Flight Rules, because what we're having to do is navigate an unknown territory. And, and brother, this whole realm of the supernatural evil and wickedness is something that's never been on the planet to the degree it is now. It's always existed. That's right. And I'm telling people when... When they understand that it cannot be navigated without King Jesus, you know, it cannot be achieved without the Holy Spirit. And what's interesting is Jesus said, if we won't confess him before men, he won't confess us before his Father in heaven. You know, you, you hear the term satellite and cable all the time for communication. And uh, satellites, there are thousands of them up there. Cables, there are millions of cables. And they're, they're humming with what we call the news. Well, there is the good news, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I hope that maybe you've listened to us today and, uh, and have a little, bit, uh, a little bit higher view of what's going on because God's in control. He's going to laugh. He, he's he's, uh, he's going to have them in derision, as King James says, meaning that these people who think they're going to control the world will not be able to do that in the end. He taketh the wicked in their own devices, and they are all aiming at destroying the Word of God. By the way, that's one of my favorite scriptures in the whole book. And the other one I want to leave with people is the fact if they go to the book of Malachi, most people know that Christians who accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, yeah. their names are written in the book of life. But most people don't understand who are Christians, true believers, followers of Jesus, that there's actually God has a book of treasures True. And that, and you know, I, I, and this is what's really amazing. You and I talking today, Mondo, the three of us talking, that's, that's precious to God. And he says, we will be his when he makes up his book of treasures, you know? The very fact that people share Jesus is such an amazingly important thing to God. He says, I'm putting them, and he says, I will spare them. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, without the testimony, and you know this, Gary, there's nothing to be ashamed of, of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And Christians have got to know their silence is what's going to, unfortunately, probably cost their lives. And if they don't take the words of, of the Lord seriously, they may think they're going to go in one place, i.e. heaven, and end up in another, because it's not those who come saying, well, look what I did for you, Jesus. Uh-uh. It's all hail the power of Jesus' name. Somebody said, you're a Jesus freak. I said, I pray I live up to that. <laughs> His name's Steve Quayle. He's produced uh, uh, videos, books, and uh, they, they all have a similar message. They all point up there, and they, they point to, to the real uh, individual who's behind 
the truth. In fact, it's called the way, the truth, and the life, right? Right. And without that way, we hear kind of a slang statement. Well, that man lost his way. Well, I love this scripture too. You know, and actually the word to amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Well, Steve, may the Lord bless you and yours. Thank you, Gary. And it's delightful because I, I enjoy, you and I could do an eight-hour marathon, <laughs> you know, if we could both hold up. That's right. Yeah. And, and we only scratch the surface. That is true. And it's so hard in the short time we have. And ladies and gentlemen, our most precious commodity is time. It's time. When I hear people saying, "Kill," I'm going to go kill some time, I said, you don't have the time to kill because the times are evil and it's accelerating. Much conspiracy today, but there's also truth. In fact, his name is Jesus. Have a good one.